Well, hello guys, Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. We're going to try something new here today. Um, I'm, I'm working on the system and stuff. This thing has so much potential uh, to be able to do things and, and so on. So I'm trying picture in picture and actually taking the Mike McCarthy um, press conference. Hopefully the Cowboys got some of the bugs out. Um, unfortunately for Mike McCarthy, he ended up having a lot of questions that he just could not hear uh, them say. So let's go live here to the press conference. Uh, what we, we refer to as workload Thursday. This is uh, our biggest day of the week. Uh, we've completed the install for the rest of the situations, red zone, short yards, goal line, four minutes. And we'll have competitive two minutes uh, today of practice. So uh, we'll be we'll be pads. Uh, our longest practice of the week. We'll be outside, uh, pending the good weather. So, which I, I think we're gonna be fine. I was told it was a, a beautiful Green Bay day. So I, I guess it, I guess that's a compliment. I I couldn't tell. All right, that's why you don't act, try to act funny virtually. With that, I'll take your question. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> Green Day. That was a good start. Good start. All right. <laughs> well, uh, with uh, Awuzia, Woods, and Awuzia. Cooper being able to work yesterday, how did they move, and did any setbacks, or you expect them to still progress from progress from what they did yesterday? I uh, felt really good about their work yesterday, uh, and I, I would see them, you know, they're scheduled to do more today. So I, I think all three of those guys are on, on schedule to, 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 to play, you know, in a, in a full capacity this week. So it's, it's just really the plan is the progression that they're – that, that, that they're set on. So, but everything was positive coming out of yesterday's work and and, and, and talking with uh, strength and conditioning and, and the trainers this morning. What do you need to see from Brandon Carr to uh, bring him up to the active roster on Sunday? What does he need to show you? I think it's just real important anytime you're dealing, dealing with a veteran. It, obviously, Brandon's played a, a ton of football, you know, not only here and, and, and just, you know, what he's was able to accomplish in his time in Baltimore, and that's really what I'm going off of. But you know, he, you know, he hasn't been here for camp, so I, you know, I really, it's it's more of a, a personal um, conditioning. You know, where is he? You know, because you know, we we just want to be smart and make sure he's ready to go. But I mean, he came in in excellent shape, um, looked good in yesterday's practice. But you know, we'll see how much more he can do today. Can you explain question. your um, the, the Friday plan that you guys do, Mike? The, is it, you running that stay program that you had in Green Bay? Is it the same kind of thing? Uh, correct. Yes. Fr Friday is uh, what we call uh, it's a regeneration day. Uh, so we'll have meetings in the morning. Uh, we'll have an extensive walkthrough uh, practice, which we refer to as a mock game, where we spend a, a you know a big a big a lot of time on situational game management. And then there will be offense, defense, and special team segments that are including in that. And then at noon, it's a two-hour block. The, the, uh, the, the football team, the players will go through what we refer to as stay soft tissue, our, our strength staff. So um, we do a heck of a job with it. We did it throughout training camp. So uh, it's, it's, it, gives, it gives the guys really a chance to recover from the week and, and put them, you know, on, on the path that you're looking for as we go into a Saturday, we'll do a, a one-hour practice. So we're basically replacing the practice that was normally done on Fridays. Some of the, the traditional Friday practice goes in today. Today's a longer practice, and in a big segment of the normal Friday practice goes into our Saturday launch practice. What was the source behind doing your practices like this? Uh, it's, it's more of a training method. It's uh, actually started back in um, – I can't remember the date. Help me out, Rich. The first Greek Olympics, a long time ago. Um, it was brought back, brought back in the '60s with the with the uh, Russian Olympic teams. It's more of a track and field approach. Uh, it's just really, you know, trusting the the data and the training methods uh, to to help guys recover before they go into go into a go into a competition. So, um, and that's why the practice on Saturday is a very important component of it because with, your, with the practice on Saturday, we're, we're launching the neurological clocks of, of, of each player, and, and it, it takes them into the game with their, with their nervous system already active and ready to go as opposed to coming off of a, the traditional Saturday practice 
where you're, you know, you, you don't practice. So it's just a, it's a different training method, uh, something that I've used for quite some time now, and it's something I clearly believe in. Do you remember from whom you picked up that training method? I don't know if you have a track and field background yourself, or is there an expert to whom you spoke that really, uh, you know, just helped you design your method of thinking about it? Uh, it's, it's really something that was, that was studied for a number of years before before uh, we did it in Green Bay. And I give a, a lot of credit to, to Mark Lavotte. He was the strength conditioning coach in charge um, during, during my time up there. So uh, there's uh, there's there's been you know studies. He's, he's taken trips to Australia, and it's you know something that a lot of time and energy was put into. And just actually the, the method of training that we used prior to that was was successful and. And it, it really was a part of my hesitancy to go to it. So uh, something that we looked at, I think, for a good three years before we actually did it. Did you notice a difference once you implemented it? Oh, definitely. Uh, I, I think the, you know, the, the, the in-season soft tissue uh, injuries uh, went down. Um, I, I thought we were better. The, the feedback that, that I received from the veteran players that, that have been through the prior uh, training method uh, you know, onto the new method, felt that they they had they were stronger in, in December, November, December, which was ultimately the goal. Uh, you know, it was it was really about making sure that we were, you know, playing at, at our peak physically, or giving us the opportunity to, in you know, no, November, December playoff football. So that that's the mindset. And it's it's really part of the plan that that I've expressed to our players day one. You know, we we have a 20 game plan here. You know, we, everything we do today is. It's about stacking success and, and putting them in the right position physically, mentally, emotionally to grow throughout the season. But we're, 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 you know, we're at full steam ahead in the most important games of the year. Mike, of course, that system has always been important. But on a year like this, when there wasn't the off-season activity, wasn't preseason games, does it become even more important to be attentive today and also on Sunday of what these guys are doing physically and how you can protect them from themselves? I definitely. I'm sorry. I didn't hear the first part of the question, but I think the training, you know, method is is really has evolved. I think today's athlete is is so much more uh, adapt to, you know, to training because they have so many more resources. I, I think you're seeing players come out of college, uh, you know, that are, that, are, that are not only educated, but you know, their, their training is, is at a different level than it was 15, 20 years ago. And I'm, I'm not saying it's it's better, but they're just exposed to more. So it's there's a lot more information, more more avenues to get things done. So I, I think really the collaboration between player and strength and conditioning and in the training room, those are very very important relationships uh, that you have to have and and to make sure to you know we're we're not doing too much. I, I think overtraining is the challenge you see more in today's NFL than than undertraining. Um, so that that's been my experience. Every player. In practice, where the GPS trackers on them that tells you guys, the coaching staff, how much running they're doing and just their overall workload. How does that information get used? Does it inform decisions on whether or not a guy practices or what level he practices or the course of the season? How are those numbers used? Uh, it, it, it's part. It's part of our conversation. Uh, we we don't just live by them, but they're, 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 we have a. We ha we have a group that we, we go through it each and every day, um, so I'm, I'm very aware of, of which each player is. That there's also, you know, there's conversations between our strength conditioning staff and the players. Uh, you, just like anything that you're trying to do in the training environment, the practice environment, there's targets that you want to hit, thresholds you, you try to stay within. Uh, but at the end of the day, too, there's you know there's the mental toughness and the challenge of of stressing your team properly. To make sure they're prepared for for competition, so you know all those factors are uh, are looked at, and it's it's really one big long constant conversation. Yeah, you talked about early in the season teams either lose or they get beat. How much is turnover the component in, in that when you when you evaluate it? Turnover ratio is is clearly one of the maybe the top uh, component of it. I mean, turnover ratio speaks to winning. You know, I, I think it's. That's known. Everybody um, teaches it, coaches it. It's it's just the you know the fact that you got to develop that the fine motor skills and ability to take the ball away, and it's a fine motor skill to, to the ability to protect the football too. So 
Uh, we, we work on it as part of our everyday practice structure, and it'll be a key, key component to our success. Mike, in addition to maybe nothing, what can you tell us about what you're doing at right tackle? Mike Fisher. Sure. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I was giving a lot of long answers, because I was expecting I'd, I'd have to give a short one. But, uh, we, we're, we're working cam, and, we, you know, we're, you know, we will have a, at least eight linemen up. I could I could promise you that for for the game, but just you know, just making sure we look at all the different combinations. How much have you been thinking yourself or talking to players and coaches about what you guys think it's going to be like Sunday night without fans? Uh, I haven't spent a whole lot of time talking about it because you know I, I think as we we went through training camp, I don't, we weren't 100 percent sure how it, how it was going to shake out. So, um, you know, once once they made the, the league made a determination on on the decibel decibel le level that we're going to be competing with, you know, we uh, we use that at practice. So, um, but at the end of the day, even when there was fans, uh, you know, I was always, I'm always a big believer. You got to make your own music, and, and that's that's an approach that we'll always have on the road. And uh, because you know, when you usually go on the road, you're you're going into a hostile environment, but. The environment's different, but at the end of the day, we're, we're still the, the opposing team, um, and it's, it's important for us to go in there and make our own music. What are the biggest challenges that the Rams' offense poses pose to you? Well, well schematically, I mean, they, they definitely challenge you. I mean, it's a, it's a system with, with, with numerous variations that, that, that build off of common looks. So I, I think they do an excellent job of that. And, and, and frankly, they're players. I mean, you're, you know, their whole football team, you're talking about, a team, I think, was returning 16 or 22 starters, so they're they're an experienced team. Uh, so, and and that's something that always plays well in, in early season, it, in my experience in uh, coaching in this league. So, you know, we're we're we're, expect, we're playing a, a system of offense that they've played together, you know, quite some time. They have, you know, the playmakers that can do a good job getting the ball to their playmakers. And at the end of the day, we got to go play our we got to go play our game. What makes Jalen Ramsey so effective in that secondary? I mean, he's he's a, he's a just a, he's a tremendous football player. I mean, you look at his skill set, his measurables. I mean, he has he has everything you're looking for in, in a corner. So, very instinctive player. Uh, I think he's he's still young, and and and, and uh, he's every time I see him play, he's, he's getting better. So, uh, he's definitely a shutdown type corner. That's not loud enough, I imagine, to be in a filing count at all. Like, what do you anticipate? Is that just pure background noise? I know their offense is going to have to play with it, too. What, what, what impact, if at all, do you think that's going to have on much of anything? Uh, to me, that you know, I'm not going to sit there and measure it, you know. So I, I, I think it's you know, every stadium is going to be different. But um, one thing I do know, we're going to have to adjust during this football game, which is normal. In, in week one games, so uh, if we have to adjust and go to silent count, we will. Uh, but you know, we 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 spend time on our, our cadence cadence variation every single day. So what, you know, whatever we need to do, use out there, we'll what we will we will get that part done. Mike, what's your philosophy on how much freedom you like the quarterback to have at the line of scrimmage? Freedom. Uh, well, I think the definition of I mean freedom is is something I think you have to clarify and define and and, and you know it's it's everything we do is, is built into a system so it's it's more his his discipline and decision making um, it, it, I think at the end of the day as, as you grow and experience with a quarterback it, you know it's it's not it's, it's really not the quarterback position that, that that's the key to those decisions or those adjustments that are that are made at the line of scrimmage it's really the other 10. Uh, because you know, as your quarterback plays and develops, I mean, you know, Dak Jack has a lot of experience for for quarterback of his age. So um, he's going to see things and recognize things at the line of scrimmage. But you know, it's it, you have to practice it. You know, it has to be coordinated. Uh, the, the impulse to, to to make that change has to be totally in sync with the other ten players. That that's the real challenge. It's it's not if the quarterback can do it. I mean, there's you know, and when you have the Opportunity to work with very experienced quarterbacks that see a lot, hear a lot, have a complete understanding. It's 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 not that you're trying to hold them back or or giving them more. It's it's how it's coordinated with the other ten, and and that and that's that's always been my emphasis. There reportedly have been discussions between the Houston Texans and Kansas City Chiefs.
chiefs about how they want to approach the anthem this evening. Has there been any discussions between you or anyone from the Cowboys organization and the Rams organization about the same? No, I haven't been part of those those type of conversations, but I, but I do know that you know that those decisions are are, are individual um, and and will be supported. Coach, what made Aaron Donald so elite, and what has impressed you about his career? Well, I mean, he really came into the league and, and, and was impactful. Just you know, for his he is so explosive, excellent with his hands, uh, his instincts. I think is rare for an interior defensive lineman. So, and when he gets the if he gets that half step on you, he gets the edge on you. His ability to close and finish on the quarterback, I, I think, is a tremendous you know trait that he has. So. Uh, has a great motor, um, so and, and I, I think he's you know, definitely one of the one of the better players, one of the better interior defensive linemen that I've seen in my time in this league. Uh, I definitely would put him in the category as dominant. So, uh, but with that, you know, we we have a plan and we got to play to play to to our plan, and and um, he's obviously a focal point for us. Rich, yeah. thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That, that music. All right, so let's see if we can pull that away. Okay, so some quick notes. Woo! Did he say 20 game season plan? That would be wild card weekend through the Super Bowl. Let's make no mistake about it. This team is focused on trying to get to the Super Bowl. No ifs, ands, or buts um, as far as Brandon Carr. Um, basically, they're saying bringing up Brandon Carr would end up being uh, contingent. Contingent? Okay. What kind of shape he's in? What conditioning that he has? Um, they're changing up what they're doing as far as practice. Uh, Saturdays are now going to be like a one-hour practice to more like a walkthrough to start getting the players' minds on playing that game the next day. And your Friday workouts are actually going to be the day. So they'll actually have an hour longer practice uh, today. So that's going to be a little bit different. But the way they're trying to work the season is to be peaking in November and December as the season goes on, which is an interesting way. Um, and to not overtrain. You know, basically, he's been saying that you know a lot of times what happens is teams fall off in the end because the more times than not they've overtrained the players and they're just not able to continue to go at that peak level for so long. Um, and of course, turnovers, as we all know, are basically he, he touched on this being the key to actually winning. There's no bigger stat than taking the football away and not giving it away. And as far as tackle goes, they'll be bringing up eight offensive linemen uh, for the game, trying to get Cam Irving ready to start for Lyle Collins and things. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully Lyle Collins will be ready to get back to uh, his form last year in three weeks. Um, that they're also going to be crowd noise pumped in. Uh, the standard from the NFL is at 35 decibels. And uh, final question asked to Dak Prescott was, or asked about Dak Prescott, is how much freedom will the quarterback actually has have? Well, Mike McCarthy is still very, he's not going to give you much information on anything. He, as he put it, Dak Prescott's an experienced quarterback. It's about having uh, the experience to recognize different things out there and then to be able to practice it as well. So you really didn't get an answer. So that's what we've got for our <laughs> today is opening day of football season. The Dallas Cowboys really getting in the last bit of real work before they get ready to go to Los Angeles, Los Angeles, as Jerry Jones would say, uh, for their game against the Rams. I'm Mark Holmes, and hopefully this recording did okay. I will see you later.